Welcome back. So glad you could join us again today. Today I thought we'd do a fantastic little seascape. This is a very simple little painting that's quite easy to do, and I think it'll stir your imagination and lead you on to bigger and better things. And I've taken the liberty of going ahead and covering the canvas with a layer of Prussian blue, very firm paint. Don't use a paint that's oily or slick. It's a very firm, dry paint. On the bottom, I've added a little bit of phthalo green and a little bit of Van Dyke brown right over here in the corner. So with that, let's get started. We'll take off here with a one inch brush and I'm gonna take a little bit of titanium white, just a small amount on the brush. One thing you'll notice on black canvas, color shows up much brighter than it does on a white canvas. And let's just go right up in here and just create a little light area right in here somewhere. There we go. And just making little X's, just brush it like that. Just so we have a light source back here. And now you can begin to see how the white is picking up the blue undercolor and it shows up. With a large brush, I'm just gonna blend this. Just very gently blend it all together. And we talk about a firm paint, but if you were using a thin paint here when you tried to blend, you'd become a mud mixer. So use a very firm, dry paint. Okay. Now, maybe, maybe we'll put a little moon up here. We can do some finger painting. I'll just take the finger here and go right up to where you want the moon and just push in a little circle. That's all. Just a little circle, like that. And then we'll take the large brush and very gently just blend this. Once again, paint's firm so you can do all this blending. There we go. Isn't that easy? You have a little moon in the sky. Now let's start with a fan brush and we can put some happy little clouds in the sky. I'm gonna load some titanium white and you don't need too much paint this time because once again, color shows up so bright here. And then we'll just take and maybe come right down here like this just begin making all these pretty little things. Just let this sort of disappear. And we can add a little more color back up in here. Just white, just white paint. There. Maybe a little tiny bit in here. And just let it gently get darker and darker as it gets away from the moon. Up in here, maybe there's another happy cloud that floats around and lives right here. There we go. Now let's take, and maybe right here. This is your world, so you can put clouds wherever you want them. Maybe right there, right there, I see a cloud. You see these things in your mind and you put them on canvas. There we go. Maybe there's another little one that just sort of hides right in here. Now, we go back to the large brush, and this is where we find out if you're brave, very gently. Just blend it all together. And you can keep blending it till it gets darker and darker and darker, and it'll finally go away if you blend it enough. So you have to make an almighty decision here. When it gets to the point you like it, stop, don't piddle it to death. The areas closest to the moon should be the brightest, and as they get farther away from the moon, let them get darker and darker and darker. If you want something darker, once again, just blend it more. There we are. Isn't that a super, super simple, nice way to make a little sky? Okay, let me wash the brush. We wash the brush with odorless paint thinner. And when you're doing this at home, rig up a box or something to contain it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna redecorate your house in a second. Alrighty, now, let's take the palette knife and we'll take a little bit of titanium white. Very, very small amount of paint. And we'll figure out here where the water is gonna be. And just very gently begin touching the canvas. Now, you want this to be pretty straight. You don't want your water to run off one side of the canvas. You have to hang a bucket over there to catch it. Try to keep it pretty straight as it comes across there. There we go. Now maybe 
right under the moon here, we're gonna have some light reflecting in the water. So we can just take and do this. I'm pushing very, very hard just to push the color right into the canvas. And just let this come all the way down. There. And we can drop a few more little things back in here. All I'm doing is touching the canvas, just touch it. And start in the lightest area and work out and automatically it'll get darker as it goes out from the light source. You don't have to worry about it or think about it. You make all these big decisions, they're done for you. Let the paint work, let the canvas work for you. You can see now how it's picking up the Prussian blue and the little phthalo green, very pretty. All we're doing is just touching. You know, we get so many cards and letters from people who are watching the shows. And one of them, one of the big things that we're hearing is people want seascapes like they have in Florida. We have a, we have a lot of super friends in Florida. So this little seascape is for them. And Florida is one of our play, favorite places. My mother lives in Florida. I was originally born and raised in Florida and moved to Alaska. But my mother, and I have a brother who still lives there. Once again, we'll take the large brush, and all we're gonna do is just very gently blend this in. And we're using pretty firm pressure here. We can really push, this paint's dry. We can push it and move it around without destroying everything. There we go. And already we have the light shining through the water. Then we can begin working on details in the water. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of magic white to my fan brush just to make the paint a little bit thinner, tiny bit thinner. Load quite a bit of paint into the brush and we can begin working on some individual waves and stuff here. And we just barely touch the canvas. We don't want big waves back here in the distance. We want them to get bigger as they come forward. Just barely touch it and give it a little pull, just like that. There you go. And that is a super simple little way to make some nice little waves. I knew you could do it. Very simple. Little things happening in the water here and there. Just let the fan brush play. Just let it play and have fun. Wherever you think there ought to be a wave, that's where it should be. Now as we come forward, we want to start letting these waves get a little bit bigger. Maybe right up in here. We'll put some beach in here. So let's put a big wave right in here. Just let it go there. There we are. Okay, now. Now, once again, right under our light source, we want this to be bright, so start here. See, automatically it gets darker as you get farther away from it. Over in here, it's getting very dark. And maybe this wave comes up here. Maybe it's getting ready to start breaking. We'll put a little more curl in it right here. You can just use your brush to make the strokes that give you any effect that you want. Maybe it's just beginning to curl over. Boom. All you have to do is just take your brush, bend it so it bends upward. And then grab the top and reverse the angle, pull it over. So that wave's coming up this way and turns. There we go. And here we can just add a few little Little highlights on the water, just where the light's playing through here. Don't want them to get too bright. Now we can take a good, dry, clean brush here and very gently just blend this right out. Just blend it so it just fades right into the background. Very gently. Three hairs and some air. We can begin pulling this. 
this down and working on some shapes. There, little things happening in the water, some little foamies. Okay, we almost have our big large wave finished here. If you want to increase the highlight, just, just touch, pull down. Okay, now maybe, maybe we have a little beach up here. I'm gonna spend some time working on this beach. Now we can take the fan brush and just put us some basic shapes in here. And we're not too worried about anything now. We're just putting some color on the canvas. And with a clean, dry brush, I wanna grab this and pull it down. I want reflections. This, I want this to look like sand, wet sand. Just pull it down. And then we'll go gently across it. It'll give the illusion of water, of very wet sand or something there. Then we can go back and once again, we'll put in the little foam things that are happening right along in here. And just sort of let them blend backwards. back. There. Now, isn't this the most fantastic little thing you've ever seen? It's a super easy way to do a nice, very effective seascape. There, we we'll just add a little bit of white and put us some little things in here. And just let your imagination take you where you want to be. There. As I say, I was born and raised in Florida. And then later on in life, I'm, I moved to Fairbanks, Alaska. What a contrast. But Alaska is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. You have so many fantastic things to look at. Now I want this side here just to fade into nothing, very lightly. That's there. Brighten that a little bit. I want that to be a little brighter. It's right under the moon. There we go. And touch, pull down to create our little wave actions. Okay, now with a large brush, once again, I'm just gonna very gently grab it. Just blend everything out so it's nice and quiet. There. And you can do this blending all the way across the painting and make it as quiet as you want it. Okay, let's wash the old brush. Now, if you want to make these little areas right along in here stand out a little bit more, we'll take the number two script liner brush, I'll put a little bit of thinner on it, and I'm gonna go right into a little bit of brown. Just make it very, very thin, like water, and turn that brush, twist it, so it comes to a nice sharp point. <clears throat> and just underneath the edges here, add a little bit of brown. That'll sort of project everything up. Just pushes it up just on the areas where you'd see it on this side. Don't worry about back there. There we go. Then, once again, we can gently blend that all in so it's nice and quiet. And let's wash the old liner brush. Now, Let's take, maybe there's a, maybe there's a little stone laying here on the, on the beach. And I'll use the small edge of the knife and we'll just put a happy little stone right here. 
just a little one. And we'll take a little bit of burn umber, just a little burn umber, and go right back and lay a little highlight on that stone, just a little light playing through there, and maybe a little underneath. Then we can take a one-inch brush, grab a hole just the bottom, and pull down. We want that stone to reflect into the wet sand and then come across. Just come across the reflection, though. We don't want to touch our stone yet. Okay. Now we'll use a little bit of magic white on the knife, and we'll put like his water standing around the stone. Just a little. Just let it work right around. And if you if you put one in here that's too bright, all you have to do is just keep rubbing it, and it'll pick up the blue that's underneath and dull right down for you. There we go. And in this painting, we use such a limited palette. There's so few colors used here. Now maybe, maybe, maybe you can, if this is in Florida, we need a palm tree. I got to have a palm tree, so maybe there's a big palm tree right out through here. We'll just start here with a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown. Pull it out very flat. Get a small roll of paint on the knife, and maybe they're just coming from right off the side of the canvas here. And we're just barely touching the canvas. Just let it go up like that. And now we can do the other side of the tree. Just do one side at a time. And when you do these, you want them to get smaller as they go up. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes it's a little hard to do. Just want them to get smaller toward the top. There, now, we got us a basic trunk in. And palm trees are like everything else. They get lonely too, so let's give him a friend. Maybe there's one that always oh, just bends all around like that. And comes way out through here. When you're painting these, make up little stories. Sort of helps you go along. Just capture a dream in your mind, put it on canvas before it escapes. And painting should make you happy. Should always make you happy. And if painting teaches you nothing else, it'll teach you to look at nature, to see the fantastic beauty that's around us every day. That we take for granted. Take a little time. Stop and look at it. There. It's a million, million things to paint. All you have to do is look around. And we'll try to show you how to paint them. What you paint's up to you. Okay, now we got us a basic little trunk right there. Let's take a little bit of white and We'll make a gray color here. Now, I've made this gray color by mixing about equal amounts of phthalo green and alizarin crimson. Phthalo green and alizarin crimson makes a beautiful, beautiful gray, a true gray. Now we can put a little highlight on these trunks, and all we're going to do is just touch the canvas. Just touch it. Let the canvas pull off what it wants. You don't have to make any decisions. Looks like the hurricane come through and blew the top of those off. There. When I was a boy being raised in Florida, it was not unusual to have some big hurricanes. Ooh, goodness gracious. They would blow you around for days. There we go. Just touch. All you have to do is just touch. It's just gray and white. Just let that follow right up the tree. Okay, I think we're about ready to put some leaves on this big old tree. Now I'm going to take <clears throat> a little bit of paint thinner on my fan brush and go right into this same gray color. But I want it very thin. Very thin. And I'm just using paint thinner. We'll add a touch more there. There we go. And you have to make an almighty decision which one of these trees is in the front and which one's in the back. Maybe the little one's in the back. So we'll do him first. All you have to do is just touch. 
and then take the fan brush with this thin paint and pull. Just pull real quick, just snap it. Just snap it and it'll make all the little leaves that you have on the palm trees. Okay, now let's go. Maybe there's another happy little limb right there. We'll give him a little pull. Just like so. Just touch and pull. And maybe there's a one that comes right out here. My cat. Touch and pull. Now this one's sort of coming right towards you, so maybe you can see both sides of him. So put a little bit on the other side too. I want all the little leaves on one side of the palm limb. Just let it come right on down, both sides. And right up here, maybe there's one that goes up and sort of turns. I'll put some limbs right here, there. Very thin paint though, very, very thin. And one more right there. Touch, pull, just sort of snap the brush. And you can put as many leaves on your palm tree as you want. I'm just gonna put a few to show you how to do them. And then at home you can just, oh, you can just do anything because you have unlimited time. Let's have a nice big limb that comes right out there. Touch and pull. Now you can really see these little leaves against the clouds in the sky. Go. Now, maybe it comes right on back like that. There. And I'm gonna give him another one elm right down through here. Just touch, pull. These are very loose. There's just a little one growing right there. There we go. Like so. We'll put a little bit on the other side. Maybe there's another one right there, right there. And we'll put one more that's sort of going across the trunk. Don't have all the limbs just going on either side. Have some actually go across the trunk. Makes it look a little more realistic. Now I'm gonna take the same gray color and go into a lighter gray, just a tiny, tiny bit. I just wanna make these stand out because I really wanna keep these silhouetted as much as possible and just barely touch and just the least little indication of highlight on there. Don't overdo very easy to overdo. And you have to sort of figure out where the, the center of the limb is here, the vein that goes through the center. Just touch like that. There we go. There's one. Just barely touch. Follow the angles that you have in your original limbs. And I think this will give all of our friends in Florida and anywhere else that want to paint a seascape an idea of how to do a fantastic little seascape that works so easy and it'll make you happy. There. Just like that. Now, maybe, maybe, going right back into the same gray color and I'm using the liner brush this time. Maybe we'll just put a few little indications of things down here. There we are. Just some little sea oats or something is growing right down in here. Just take your fan brush and drop them in. There, I said fan brush, I meant liner brush. And when you're at home painting, you can put a lot more detail. You could put a little, little beach in here. Let's take and just use a liner brush here 
And we'll put some little tops on some of these. Make them look like little seals. There. That's all there is to it. Do you could do it. And something like so. I think we have a painting here that's just about ready for a signature. So I'll go into a thin oil. And any kind of thin oil will work. At home, you could use like linseed oil or copal or any type of oil that's nice and thin. You want to take and work that brush until the paint's almost like water. Turn it to bring you a nice sharp edge here. Just turn it. And then we can sneak right up in here and put a signature on it. That's when you're almost ready to stand back and admire. Now, when you're doing these black canvases at home, view them under several different lights. It's unbelievable what happens when you change the light sources. These paintings are almost like having two in one. Now, next week, we'll use a white canvas. So if you're painting along with us, have your canvas ready, your easel set up, and we'll do a fantastic painting together. Until then, from all of us here, happy painting. God bless. Thank you.